Welcome to the Treehouse of Love. Uh-huh. We're live. Join the conversation at 512-836-0590. Yeah. Now, here are Todd and Don. 707 Todd Jeffries and Don Pryor. Yeah. Hey, and a shout out to the men and women of the Texas Forest Service. They got a big firefighting aircraft right now stationed at Austin's airport. All of this, uh, you know, part of a wildfire response. We got an increased threat of wildfires in this area, and they wanted us to say hello to the wildland firefighters of Texas. They are ready to go. They're out there getting ready, man. Thank you very much for uh, for tuning in and listening. Right now, though, 707. Time for the Daily Dossier. These are the top stories you need to know about before you get in that work truck and before you get to the cubicle. Uh, who was granted a West Bank visit on humanitarian grounds? Israel's interior minister says he has received a, a granted request by Democrat Rashida Talab to enter the Israeli-occupied West Bank on a humanitarian grounds. Israel had earlier decided to ban Talab and Elon Omar from visiting the country. Uh, you got to vote for me. President Trump seeks to reassure supporters about the state of the U.S. economy, telling rally goers last night in New Hampshire that their financial security depends on his reelection. And there's a new study out this morning. It's a University of Texas study finds a correlation between anti-police rhetoric and the willingness of some officers to be proactive while on the job. It's Not really good. starting to wear thin on them. Not good. Yeah, the study surveyed 183 police officers, 238 firefighters, and found that those who felt disconnected from the public were far less likely to take a proactive approach to the job. There are more tax delinquent properties in East Austin than anywhere else in the city, specifically the 78702 zip code. Yeah, tax collector Bruce Alphonse, he tells KXAN it's a symptom of gentrification. Those folks just can't afford to live there oh, anymore. There you go. The zip code has 357 delinquent properties, totaling more than $3.3 million owed. Then sell and make a lot of money. Now, while the city council has said that they would like to pay off those properties for the homeowners, the state law won't allow it. Also, there was a town hall meeting last night, University of Texas at Tyler. Last night, hosted by Governor Greg Abbott, the state was addressing the cause of the El Paso shooting head-on through his domestic terrorism task force in an upcoming roundtable on the discussion. He uh, downplayed the need for red flag gun laws, though, last night. Texas will take a balanced and measured approach where we will work on getting guns out of the hands of deranged killers, but at the same time, respecting Second Amendment rights of law-abiding Texans. There you go. Now in the uh, Democrat response, San Antonio Congressman Joaquin Castro, uh, the guy that likes to dox Trump supporters out there, he disagreed calling on Congress to pass red flag laws and more. We could require universal background checks on all firearm purchases and we could keep weapons of war off our streets. There you go. Now you're up to date. The Daily Dossier, the top stories you need to know about before you get to work. It's on the front page of our website at newsradioklbj.com. It's a really um, disturbing story about what's going on with with police and and fire as well. Uh, Firefighters and and police officers as far as not willing in some cases to, to do what they should be doing because they're afraid of what the repercussions might be because of well, a lot the of, overall a lot of, bad image. Well, a lot of police officers, uh, I mean, I, I can understand that uh, you go about your day and you may be concerned time to time, you know, is that person going to file a lawsuit on me? They're going to they're gonna file a complaint yeah. on me just because, you know, I looked at them. Are they going to file a complaint? Is this going to tie me up in a courtroom and hearings and, 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 you know, meetings and things like that for the next six months and totally destroy things at home? I mean, Yeah, I mean, I can understand how you have that in the back of your mind. You see all the – the war on cops, it continues big time. It really does, and for the life of me, I I just cannot get my head around it, especially given what we witnessed the other day in Philadelphia when cops are literally being shot at as people heckle them, heckle them as they're watching this horrific shootout happen when they're trying to bust this drug dealer and they have that standoff, that hours-long standoff they're being heckled as they're being shot at sure uh, and l- not only at but being shot literally, literally yeah. yeah it is uh 6 12 here on the tide of don show how about uh, some kudos to austin police this morning you hear about this story austin police have now arrested a suspect who allegedly attacked a woman in the middle of the day in a wooded area in southwest austin and i think that this is the same guy we talked about earlier this week that was attacking folks on the hike and bike trails that had that nigerian accent yeah there was a very vague description very of, vague uh, a black man in his 20s 5 foot 7 kind of thing but i think they got the guy yeah according to police officers they responded to an aggravated assault call about 1 o'clock on the 4600 block of monterey eggs boulevard near uh, archstone greenbelt on saturday august the 10th 
That woman was alone on the trail in a secluded area of the Greenbelt when she says she was attacked from behind. And there's another case, a very similar attack. Uh, Police say she was able to fight the suspect off. He eventually ran away. Uh, But now Austin police, they were able to identify the suspect with the help of a witness and surveillance videos as Marcus Edward Ballard Jr. He's currently in custody in the Travis County Jailhouse. He's charged with aggravated assault, second degree felony. There you go. Maybe responsible for a couple of assaults. It's surveillance video. Surveillance video once again comes into play here. And that's why when I see video cameras all over the place, I don't care. I don't care because ultimately it's going to help us out. We need, uh, needed some surveillance cameras in that Jeffrey Epstein cell is what we needed. You and I observed that in our break room here at the radio station, we have more cameras than we do in that prison, than we had in that prison. They know here who would steal the yogurt which most likely is Ed Clements, we know that. That's right. However, don't know what happened in that jail cell with with, uh, Epstein. Amazon's summer sale got many people spending last month. We'll take a closer look at that and some business news straight ahead. The Todd and Don Show. Commercial.